Hey guys, welcome back to D3D12 Shallow Dive. I am your host, Chili. Let's get right to it. In the last video, we, we did the bare minimum really needed just to be able to clear the back buffer and present to the screen. And the result of that is, yeah, we got this nice uh, blue color here. Everything is working as expected. Now, let's uh, let's embellish on that a little bit. Let's make it a little more interesting. I want to cycle that color that we are clearing the back buffer to make things a little more psychedelic. So let's add a couple of mathy headers here, C math and numbers. We are going to keep a time T and use that to animate the color. So at the beginning of our render loop, we're going to set T equal to zero and we're going to make a little constant for our step. We will step T by 0 0.01 per frame. Now here's obviously where, you know, the magic is going to happen. We don't want now to have a fixed clear color. We want to set that based on our time T. And that's going to look something like this. We use a sinusoid to, you know, vary the values smoothly. And we're putting them on different, each channel is uh, going to you know, cycle at a different frequency. They're going to be out of phase with respect to each other. So that I think that should give us basically all the colors. And we're here, we're just doing some stuff to make it range between zero and one. A little change here. I want to uh, present with VSync. So we'll do one percent per, you know, refresh basically of the monitor. We don't want to present too fast because that'll just make the cycling go insane. And finally here, we want to advance the simulation time. So uh, we're going to, you know, add step to T every frame. But if we go above 2 pi, then we'll just go back to zero again. Because, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to get the number too crazy high, although it probably won't ever get that high. But it's just a good to keep it within the zero to 2 pi range. If you're not aware, C++ now has a very nice collection of constants. So you do std numbers and you can get all sorts of different constants in here and you can template them on whatever, you know, type you want. But yeah, that should do it. This should be us cycling the colors. Let's build and run. See if it uh, turns out. Oh yeah, it's very nice. Got some very nice cycling going on here. Beautiful stuff. All right. Psychedelic. Now I want to return to something that I glossed over in the previous episode. Uh, so we'll create the device here. We can give it this value of 12.2 and it should result in an error. And yeah, we see, we do get an error. We get our message box here and everything. We get our error message in the, uh, the log and we can double click that and take us to the line. That's nice and everything. But usually uh, when we're running in debug, we would expect the Direct3D debug layer diagnostics to be enabled and it to give us a lot more information than just the parameter is incorrect because that's that's not a lot to go on, right? Um, but we're not getting that. And you have to usually like in Direct3D 11, you've got to pass in a parameter to create device in order to enable that layer. There's no place to pass that parameter in here. All we do is we get the, if we choose a specific adapter, we can pass in the adapter interface. We can choose our feature level. And then there's just the, the com interface stuff. So there's no way to select, to turn on the debug layer there. And you can see here with the DXGI, there is a parameter and we are passing it in. Um, but there's no such thing here. So, and we can do a little test here. So, okay, so we, Ostensibly, we should have DXGIs enabled, which seems not to enable D3D12s. But we can test DXGI. We could give, uh, for example, in here, we could pass it null pointer for the window handle. And we can see what it gives us here. And you see here, um, okay, so we get the, the H result. Application made a call that was invalid, blah, blah, blah. Enable D3D debug layer to see more. Uh, so now let's look at here. And we can see we do get debug stuff here. DXGI error. No target window specified and no window associated with the owning factory. Now this is very useful information. It's a hell of a lot better than application made a call that was invalid. Okay, so we know that the, the debug layer is working for DXGI, but not for D3D. 
Uh, we know that we're explicitly enabling it for DXGI. We have no way of enabling it for D3D12. And it, it appears as though they've changed it underneath our feet once again. So I'm gonna cut to the chase here. You need to do this to enable it for D3D12. Uh, you need to call a function to get the debug interface and then you call enable debug layer and then you should be good to go. So with this now, let's restore the, uh, the create swap chain function to its former glory and yes. So now let's try this error again with the debug layer enabled. Okay, again, we get our exception, except down here, now we get DX error. And what does it say? It says unrecognized D3D feature level for minimum feature level. Okay, so apparently, for whatever reason on my system, even though this is a defined key, it is not recognized. And uh, that's, a, that's fine, I mean, I don't need it for right now. Now we're getting in some very good Intel from our, uh, you know, a direct 3D API layer. No, just a side note here. Um, this has been in my other series. There is an extension that you can get. It is called VS Color Output 64. And with it, you can customize it using regex to detect certain, you know, error lines and colorize them. So that's why I can get this DX error highlighted in red. And it's very useful because when you get all this churn, it's, it's pretty easy to overlook a line like this, uh, but not if it's in red. All right, so now let's run this again with the debug layer uh, enabled. All right, so far so good. We're not seeing anything bad in here. Let's turn this off. Blammo, we get an unheralded exception. Interesting, we get an error here. Corruption. An ID3D resource object, unnamed object, is referenced by GPU operations in flight on command queue, deleted while still in use. So, we were deleting something that was still in use. We never knew that until we enabled the debug layer. We were just doing it and uh, we thought everything was cool. This is why you enable your debug layer and you run it during development, because you don't want to ship with stuff like this. It might have run fine on your machine, but on another machine it causes a big problem. So what is the problem? Well, we can look at our call stack. And so we can see right now where it's, we're freeing a COM pointer for the swap chain. So we know that we are destroying the swap chain, but the swap chain is still in use. And that happens right here. It's right as we're exiting. So as we exit this, we destroy everything with our smart pointers because that's what they do. They clean up after themselves. But it was still being used. And that makes sense because if you've issued something, issued commands, issued a present or whatever, while those are in flight, we loop up here, we check, oh, we see Windows is closing. Okay, let's get out. And then we start to destroy things and that's when things blow up. So what should we do? It's not that hard. All we want to do is before we exit, let's make sure that our queues are empty. Now, how would we do that? Well, it's very simple. We insert a signal and then we wait on that signal. And if we haven't inserted anything after that signal, that means that once that signal is reached, the queue is now empty. And so this is the code here. It should be familiar by now because it's just basically the code that's up here. You signal and then you set an event and then you wait on the event. Um, now we're not gonna increment the fence value because this is the last time it will be signaled. So we just use it as is. And then we set the event for the value here and we're gonna wait. Uh, and the only difference here is we're not gonna wait for infinity. Uh, just in case for some reason the event is never signaled, we will allow it after two seconds to just exit because you don't want the program to just freeze up. So if it gets stuck, then just hard exit and you know there might be errors but it's better than your program freezing and there you go now we should not get that error so a moment of truth close the window and bang no message box no red text in our log we are 100 percent clean and clear now just to nail the point home let's try one last experiment here so we're going to temporarily disable our debug layer stuff here and now uh, we're not going to synchronize anything in this loop. So we're not going to signal. And then of course, we're not gonna wait for the signal. We're just gonna run it as fast as we can. In fact, I'm even gonna like turn off vSync. 
So now we're potentially, you know, reusing command list and command allocator even before it's been done. And let's just, let's just see what happens. Let's see how things blow up. And you can see here, like, it works. Like, there's no, there's no problem here. You're like, looking. I'm not getting any errors out of my calls. And everything just seems to work. So you can, and this is not right. This is a bad way of doing business in Direct 3D, but it can work. And it's just the highlights the fact that if you don't have, if you're not running with your debug info, if you're not checking all your returns, you could ship some very nasty, embarrassing code. Now let's turn on the debug layer. Let's run this bad boy again. And boom, like right away, we get like a whole bunch of stuff in here and then an exception is thrown. Look at all this red. Reset, a command allocator is being reset before previous executions associated with the allocator have completed. Yeah, that's not a good thing. And that happens a few times. So apparently it kind of lets you, the debug layer even says, hey, okay, I'll, I'll let you get away for this a little bit. And then apparently we hit one here and it's like, okay, I'm, I'm done with you guy. You are just, you don't know what the hell you're doing. And then we get uh, remove device error. There is strong evidence that the application has performed an illegal or undefined operation. Yeah, so the Microsoft police have come and they have confiscated your driver, your device. And let me tell you, that's a good thing because you want to know as early as possible when you are being a bad programmer so that you can make a, the program better and so that you can learn and not do stupid shit in the future. And, you know, I've mentioned this, you know, many times in several videos, but like when people are having problems when they're doing stuff specifically, you know, they're following my tutorials and they're having problems, you know, I always want to help them out. Um, but as soon as I find out that you have skipped all your error checking because you thought, well, I don't need to do that stuff. It's a waste of time. That is when I'm just like, OK, buddy, you're on your own mode, because I mean, if you're not going to help yourself, don't expect other people to help you. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> So yeah, hopefully this has been a bit of an eye opener for those of you who have not already had your eyes opened and uh, everyone is going to enable their debug layer. Of course, you don't want to enable this during release builds. I am I don't care about that right now, but in, in a real piece of code, you would check, you know, what mode you are compiling in and set these values accordingly. Now I want to wrap this up by looking at something interesting in the documentation here. So this is... The, uh, the programming guide for Direct 3D 12, straight from the horse's mouth, Microsoft. And by the way, if you're serious about getting into Direct 3D 12 and learning it, I recommend that you read this from you know top to bottom, every single page, um, because it's, it's important. And this is the first order, this is the direct source of knowledge. And uh, I'm not gonna say like the docs are amazing, but there's a lot of really important info in them. It's, there is something incredibly interesting in here, and we're not gonna enable it right now, but in the future. Uh, so the debug layer is generally something that happens on the, uh, on the CPU side in the direct 3D runtime. Um, so it checks things in the runtime, and it's very lo lo lots of things that you can check. But once the code reaches the GPU, you, you're not gonna get any feedback, except you now have GPU based validation. So if you call set enable GPU based validation, now you can get debug checking happening on the GPU as the GPU is running your stuff. And a lot of it seems to have to do with, you know, mismatches between your shader and the things that are bound to your pipeline. Indexing out of bounds in a shader, that would be a very nice one to get some information about. Also, this one, this is this has to do with those um, resource barriers and transitions. This checks to make sure that you are had to have them in valid states when you're using them. So your transitions are all kosher and above board. So, yeah, once we get into, you know, looking at uh, shaders, which will be pretty soon and we start binding resources to them and using them, I think we want to test this out and uh, see how it works. It's going to be interesting. But that's going to about do it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Keeps these videos rolling in. And I will see you soon with some more Shallow Dive.